Hey everybody, my name is Matt, and this is going to be a series of videos that handles a lot of the general computer science topics that are real important, and maybe covers a lot of the algorithms out there. Uh, and probably also going to look at some of the Ruby on Rails stuff that I deal with on a daily basis, like gems and different techniques that are pretty useful. Um, but definitely a lot of computer science related stuff, algorithms, data structures, all that. So let's get started. Binary search is a very important concept and algorithm within computer science. Its, its derivatives are used trillions of times a day to search the world's data. So a good example is a database. I mean, databases, every time they go through an index, they're typically using a derivative of binary search. Um, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to start with this array. It's an unsorted array of numbers, 13, 7, 33, 22. You get the idea. And we're going to put it into a little bit of a better format for this, though. So, okay. So these, these gray boxes obviously represent all the elements in the array. And in this case, we've got eight, right? Okay, cool. So the first thing to understand about binary search is how linear search works. Linear search is the iteration over all the elements until you find what you're looking for. So we start off, let's just say we're looking for number 89. We'll start with the first element and compare each element until we find the element we're looking for, right? So we go 13, nope, not 7, not 33, on and on and on until you find the number you're looking for, which is 89. Okay, great. So we found it, no problem, right? That seems efficient enough, doesn't it? Okay. The problem is, linear search is expensive. What do I mean by expensive? Well, imagine you've got an array of 48 elements instead of 8. Now, you've got to iterate through a lot more to find the number you're looking for, potentially, right, in the worst case. So let's take the worst case here, meaning 77. In order, 77 is in the bottom right-hand corner, by the way. So if we had to go through all these elements, let's see what we'd have to do. How would this work, right? First, we start with 6, then 32, 11, 22, until we get through the first few, then the first line, and okay. So we had to go through every single element until we found what we were looking for. So that's great. We got what we wanted. The problem is, well, how long did it take? Well, taking this array again, let's say there's, like I said, we said there's 48 elements. The problem, though, is not if there's 48 elements, because any computer, I mean, you could take one from 1982, and it's going to go through 48 elements like it's nothing. The problem is, that's too long. Imagine a million elements. That's when the problem comes in especially if you have to search those million elements repeatedly, which most databases do, of course, right? Okay, so how is binary search different? Well, simple. The first thing is that to do a binary search, your elements must be sorted. If they're not sorted, this won't work. But that's how databases work, right? They, take, they create indexes off of your values, so they'll take last names or uh, maybe dollars or whatever it is, and they will sort that into a list and that'll be your index. That's the first requisite to do this search. So how does it work? Well, first, what we do is we pick the element in the middle and we compare it with our target value. Our target value in this case is 77. So let's select the, an element in the middle, like 57. Then what we can do is say, well, we know that none of the elements below that are what we're looking for, so we can eliminate them. So now we just have 57 to 97. So how, what do we do now? We repeat the process. So we'll say we can discard 57 because that's not it. So we'll pick a number in the middle, 90 or 79. Then we know 77 versus 79. Well, 79 is bigger. We don't need to search any higher than that, right? So we'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of 79 too. Then we'll search through... For, we'll pick the number in the middle, get every, get rid of everything below that, because we know 68 is lower than 77. Get rid of 68 as well, and pick the number in the middle, not surprisingly, 74. And we know 74 is less than 77, so we don't need that either. Let's get rid of 77. Or, excuse me, let's get rid of 74. Now we're just left with two elements. We compare those two, and there we go. We got the number we're looking for. Now the question is... 
how much time did we save? Well, with linear search, it took 48 comparisons before we found what we were looking for. With linear search, excuse me, with binary search, there's only six. Now, that's a pretty significant time savings. It only took 12% of the time to get through all of those. Now, again, why does this matter? Because, imagine a million elements again. You'd have to visit all million elements with linear search. But how, mo how long would it take with binary search? Let's take a look. Well, we st I mean, because think about it. You're dividing by two every time, right? So you only have half as many elements to look through each time. So we'll, start, we'll take our million elements. Then we do our binary search once. We're down a half a million, quarter of a million, 125,000, 75, and on and on and on and on and on until we're rapidly approaching just having a few elements left, right? So, five, two, one, until we finally find what we're looking for. So we're having to visit far fewer elements than we would otherwise. Now, 21 total comparisons versus a million. That's why it's so powerful. Because each time you're having, you're, you know, you're dividing by two the amount of elements that you need to look through, and that's why binary search is so fast. Well, that's it. You know, hopefully in the next few videos, I'll be able to make things that are a lot more in depth. I, I did have some code examples this time, but it ended up being extremely difficult with the software that I'm using to go through and illustrate exactly how that code works. So you will find a link in the description to check out some of the code for each example through the blog. It's pseudocode, uh, it's, excuse me, I'm saying it's a link to a blog which has the code. Uh, the code is pseudocode. It's basically a derivative of Java, but you can basically hack it in any language that you want, but it's really important that you actually try this out for yourself and see the benefits of how fast it can really be. Okay, that's it. Take care and thanks for watching.